listening to the Holy Spirit. I heard that song sing from age of three all the way up to age of seven or eight or nine. My mother, my mother went to the Church of God in Christ. My dad went to the CME Church. Church of God in Christ was under the hill. The CME Church on top of the hill. <laughs> my, my mother passed. My mother came on as past years. She said, "Well, I guess we fought to be together." So she moved to the to the CME Church. Mm -hmm. So that's why I got my foundation. That's why I got my fire from my mother side and my daddy's side. I got my foundation. So this one I want to share with you this uh, Black History uh, speech. I never done one while I preached anywhere. I have done them, but I never per se was a Black History speech. I did them all the time in high school because I was always asked to speak at programs, Sister Vivian, but I never knew why, but someone else saw that in me. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning for your spirit. We thank you each and every one here this morning that's with us. Father, I just thank you for what you do for me in my life. Lord, I thank you. Lord, bless the word this morning. As I preach this word this morning, in your name I do pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We move from the, from the lectionary text this morning. Titus chapter 2. I've been studying in chapter in Titus, writing a book on Titus. Amen. Uh, All right. Titus chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. And doing this book study, and doing this book study, I focus on Titus chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. The, this witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, and they may be sound in the faith not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of man that turn from the earth. I'm gonna read one more. To be pure, all things are pure, but to them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mouths and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him and being unmentable, and disobedient and to every good work reprobate. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, our topic is, if you allow me to put a topic on this, is hope that we can believe in. Hope that we can believe, that we can believe in. So I listened to uh, Ms. Griffin read her, script, read her scripture, and I listened to Sister Vivian read their scripture. So the Holy Ghost is always on time. Praise the Lord. She talked about the scriptures is, is really talking about what I'm talking about this morning, but it came from another book called Titus chapter two. Amen. Amen. An African American perspective, Black History Month this month, an Afro American perspective, hallelujah. Hope that we can believe in. As I was preparing myself to speak to us this morning, I said us, I pondered on numerous occasions as what I would say to us. Although I've done this before in high school and, and other places, but I still find these, these type of speeches a bit, bit challenging. Why challenging? Well, the, for starters, how, I, how can I, someone who was not born during the days of segregation or during the Jim Crow era, even being a, 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 a the struggle that so many of us, uh, you endured during your lifetime. But during my preparation, I began to thank God that I was born in July, 1961. I thank God today that my eyes never had the opportunity to see the uh, separate drinking fountains for white and black, colored balconies in movie theaters laws that require black folks to sit on the back of the bus. If I know anything, I was too little. I was holding my mom's hand, my mother's hand, and didn't, didn't even recognize what was going on. Maybe I'm, I'm just too young to understand the pain that some of, of you and many of our ancestors felt. Maybe when they did not, they, they could not eat at the certain uh, lunch, <laughs> lunch counters and register to vote and, and buy property wherever they chose. I think I need to, to take a, uh, make the set the record straight. I do not stand here today. I do not sit 
here today with the intent of giving your litany of events of quotes about American dark past, but I will allow the blood state of history reveal American guilt and shame. I'm a person that loves history. So Holly, just bear with me this morning as I march on with the soldiers in the army of the Lord. Help me, somebody. I'm trying to hold it down from there, but it won't yeah. come out of me. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So, however, and tell you that there is hope that we believe in. As I ponder and reflect on my own life, I begin to realize that, that the task is not difficult because even though I was, was not around during those mentioned times, I realized that I still have a perspective. Although this body never felt the pressure water from a fire hose, my ex-mother-in-law said she felt the water hose and as it felt like ex penetrating her body and knocked her down. And she was a big woman. Hallelujah. Not felt the bite of a German shepherd teeth. My, my daddy said that, that one hit him from the back of his leg. I asked him one day, what is that scar on your leg? He said, well, don't make holy. Well, a German shepherd bit him and a white man knocked him away from his hill. Holly, holly, there is serious hope that I can believe in. I was a nosy little girl, but I got uh -oh. information, praise the Lord, from what things the Lord wanted me to see. But truth of the matter is I thought as a young girl growing up in hallelujah in, in Athens, Louisiana, that freedom was just that free. Then I discovered that that nothing in life is free, Dr. Griffin. Uh, that the salvation I see freely even cost my savior Jesus his life on Calvary. The right to vote cost thousands their blood, sweat, and tears. Standing up for justice cost Dr. Michael the King and his life on a balcony in Mississippi. But so I, as I reflect, I mean in Memphis, so as I reflect, I have no choice but to thank God for the people who paved the way like Dr. Luther King, hallelujah, who was willing to risk his life to combat social injustice and to enhance the welfare of others. We have libraries. It makes me upset. We have libraries. We have we have uh, uh, we have we have all kind of things available for us. But we are too mean. We pass on by. Oh, that library looks like it's empty. With these people have placed their lives in lives for us to be free, be able to go in and read. Yeah. Yeah. Looking at, a, uh, looking at a, a, a movie. Amen. I'm trying to slow down. At a movie. That the man that they, they got laced because they could read A and D and but because they can add up two plus two is four. Somebody died for us to, to read. So now we can right. lay back and read if we want to. But now we got audio books. So I'm gonna put on the on the holly on the phone and then somebody else read it to us. We have got Amen. so much. We have forgotten about where we come from. Hallelujah. Praise All right, Reverend. Oh, Amen. Amen. I'm old and in mine. Hallelujah. I thought I was old, but I, I figured out that I was not yet. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but I that nothing in life is free. So as I reflect, mm. I have no choice but to thank God for those who paved the way for us. Although I'm, I'm not able to enjoy a personally witness place of Dr. King's dream because a reality in my life. I also realized that in the 21st century, countries to be a challenging time. I remember walking the walk with Dr. King and down in Atlanta when I was taken there uh, uh, years ago, a couple of, uh, maybe about four or five, 10 years ago. And as I walked that walk, amen, and I could remind myself, remember myself, if I went to the Dr. King Center and saw the people at the wax in the wax museum, and I'm standing there with them and looking at them in their eyes, in their eyes, whoever made those art, those pieces knew what they was witnessing. And I went to his home, amen, and walked through the place, amen, and went to the church, amen, and walked through the church with his voice ringing in the place. <laughs> A hair stick on the back of my head, but I knew that hallelujah, that God had to had something to do with this. But there is an old Negro spiritual that says we shall overcome someday. Well, I, I'm waiting on that someday when 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 I'm I reflect on the of my children and be able to rely on my children and my grandchildren are able to go to school and not worry about when they come home or not. I will, hallelujah, someday I went on that day when I have to worry about my sons, amen, being grown black men, all trying to take care of their families, be able to go and come back home. I, have, I believe someday, hallelujah, I wait on that someday we'll be able to, hallelujah, just, just lay back and rest.
blessed. <laughs> right, that's right. Amen. 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 Woo! <laughs> yes, the human, yeah, the human knowledge, the human knowledge is declared that we shall overcome someday. That it said what David has said someday. But okay. from the looks of things, so far it appears that we have overcome some hurdles and are over, it's only only to be shackled by some obstacles. Uh, like the subprime mortgages and record numbers of, of foreclosure homes and inequality of our, our black men in the penal system and our neighborhood filled with drugs and, 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 and parks have no benches and have broken equipment and by basketball goal courts have no rims and hallelujah. How can we, how have we overcome? And, and the list go on and on. You see, hallelujah, uh, and my beloved, there are, these are just a few examples which indicate that our work is not yet done, the struggle has not ended. But yes, water holes and dogs may be a thing of the past, but the threats and intimidation still exist today. Jim Crow laws, no. Separating unequal, yes. Separation, no, hallelujah. Segregation, no, but the have and the have nots, yes but radical profiling mm -hmm. and crooked states. But there is hope that we can believe in now. Jesse Jackson proclaimed that we should keep their hope alive. Barack Obama liked to refer to it as a, a, a destiny of, of hope. But, but I personally prefer what Apostle Paul said. Come on, Paul. He said that he said that which we refer as hope as eternal life, <laughs> uh, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Well. You see, I like Apostle Paul's perspective because he reminds us in Titus 2, 13 through 14 that this is a hope that we can look for. Listen to what Paul says in verse 13. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us for all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good work. Well, speaking of good works, I challenge you to continue to hope, continue to stand up for change, continue to do what is right. Dr. King once said, the ultimate measure <laughs> of a man is not where he stands in the moment of the comfort of convenience, but where he stands at the time of challenges and controversy. Help me somebody. That's, that's, that's right, that's right. Dr. Griffin, Dr. Dr. King went on to say, the true neighbor, hallelujah, will risk his position, his prestige, and even his life for the welfare of others. If you somebody needs somebody to help them, you look back and they gone, hey amen, you by yourself. But Dr. Dr. <laughs> King say a, 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 a person of integrity will help their neighbor, hallelujah, will risk his position, here or her position, and, and his, his or her prestige, and even his or her life for the welfare of others. Well, what we simply mean, don't just dare to be different, but live and make a difference in someone else's life. I so the remember. question that I have for us, us this morning is, what are you going to do to make a difference in your community? What are you going mm. to do to make a difference in your community? But before you answer that, I would like to share with you something that I, I'm sure you have, have heard before. But nevertheless, I think it's fitting for this moment. All it's right. entitled The Cold Within, C-O-L-D, The Cold Within. Six human trapped by, by half cent in a black bit of cold. Each possessed a stick of wood, or so the story is told. Their dying fire in need of logs. This first woman held hers back. Listen, but one of the faces around the fire, she noticed was black. The next man looked around the way, saw no one from his church. And could not bring, bring himself to give the fire his stack of the birch. One, one third, the third one sit in the tattered clothes. He gave his coat a, hither, a hitch. And why should my log be put into use to warm this filthy rich? The rich man just sat back and thought of his wealth he had in store and how he kept what he had and earned from the lazy, shiftless poor. The black man's face bespoke revenge as the fire passed by his sight. And for all saw in his stick a wood was a chance in spite of the white. Uh, and uh, the last man, the last man of this furlong group did nothing except for the rain. Given all to those who gave was how he played the game. The law held tight in death still hands was proof of human sin. 
You see, they did not die from the cold without. The group died with, from the cold within. Yeah. <laughs> Brother, I'm so Amen. Our lives and the lives of our children don't have to be like the six individuals. Individual. Your actions as well as, as, as your inactions will determine the course of their, their, their future. As I prepare to, to finish this message, I remind you that there is hope that we can believe in. This hope when when, when, when decide to help somebody <clears throat> rise from despair <laughs> on the wings of hope by putting a little love in your heart. Oh yes, this is the hope that we can believe in, the hope that happens when you decide to make a difference in our community, in our neighborhood, in our cities, and in our towns, and in our state, when we put down hatred and pick up love. So let us continue to remember the widow and the orphan, the homeless and the hungry, because this is the hope that we can believe in. Let me tell you why I have hope. I have a hope because the terrible situation happened to, to me a few years ago. My mother, I told a story in my Bible study class. One day my mother was on her way to uh, clean this lady's house. And she stopped by her cousin's house to talk a minute and laughing and talking and the car was running and, and it went dead. So the car run hot. Mama said, oh, foot the car and run hot. So we get out the car and walked up the street because the neighbor, the cousin have nothing. She didn't have a car. She went on in the house. See y'all later. Went to the next house. And it was an old white man there and, and the dogs was, was coming to the fence. And he said, what y'all want, Dad? I remember, I wasn't in it, but I remember. My mother said, we need a ride up the street. She had her head down. I said, Mom, wait, and I, and I kept shaking her hand. My little brother kept shaking my hand, kept playing with the, the, the rock. Listen, I'm be through just a minute. And he said, okay, I'm gonna take you to her house. Yep, and I was gonna get, it. and I said, my wife didn't get in the front seat. She's still pulling my hand, shaking my hand, be quiet, be quiet. So we got mm -hmm. in the back seat, went to the lady's house. And mother, he let us out, he backed up. And mother told him, thank you. And he didn't say a word. Mother went to the door and knocked on the door. <clears throat> the lady that she worked for for months and cooking and cleaning and all of that. And, could smell the cornbread on the porch when we sit on the back porch all day playing. And the lady came to the door. She said, that's all right. I done did everything. She called her N-word and all of that. Mother just stood there with her head up in there looking at the woman. I could see the tears rolling down the side of her face because she wore glasses. She had my hand. I was, I was saying, mama, she kept shaking my hand. She held my hand so tight I knew to shut up because she was going to break my hand. But I think if I had <laughs> mother had to hold my hand, she would have held that woman's face. Because my mother, that day I knew mother was a Christian because, not because she belittled, belittled herself when I speak it. She was a, a child of God because she allowed that lady to call her all kinds of names and said, thank you, and walked away and went to the next cousin's house and they took us home. Amen. Amen. And my Amen. thing is, Amen. we had segregation in schools. 19, when I went the 19 in the late 70s, I believe, and we, whenever the first the, the first class went to the white school, and all the smart kids went to the white school. I guess I was smart because I was on the bus. We went to the white school. I remember I was in the fourth grade, and every day my mother would dress me with a beautiful shoe, make me a dress every day because she said you out there with them folks. And so she made me a dress every day. Please listen. And my daddy would say, okay, pumpkin, that's hope. Then he stopped calling me pumpkin and he started calling me joy because every day I came home, I would say everything was good and just smiling and he would call me joy. So every day since Vivian, I would go to school, I have my lesson, I would have my stuff so pretty and, and mama would have me in the kitchen Ron Tip Ron, Go Jane Go. Every day I would read that little book. <laughs> but when the time come, I, I raised, I'm called the teacher, Miss Bless. Every day I would, she would have me in the back corner and all the other kids, uh, of, of, of all other kids was all in the other room, in the room, but I was in the back, me and another girl was in the back, me and a boy. They always had, I always had a back, a boy and a girl in class. So I was a girl and he was, a, a, my other my friend was a boy. He's a doctor now. But so we were sitting in the back of the classroom and every time she would ask a question, we would raise our hand. 
And I'm just raising my hand and just like that. Went to sit and raise my hand. But Miss Bless never did, they never did call me. Nobody called me. Nobody recognized my name. And all those other kids just sitting back looking at us laughing. So hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then one day I wrote a poem about Miss Bless. I said, was I smelly? Was it my clothes? I know my mother made the best of clothes. I know it was a new dress. I know I got my lesson. But, you know, I didn't let that determine myself. Because when I went home, my dad said, what's up, Joy? I said, mm -mm, I ain't going back to them place. He said, but you got to go, baby, because you making a way for the others to come on next year. I said, well, they better come on because I'm, I'm not going back. I always, I always would say what I say. I'm not going back up there. I'm not going back up there. So as I look back to civilians, I was part of the social justice, the ones of those who came after me, uh -huh. amen, the ones who came after uh -huh. me, hallelujah. We went amen. to our home yeah. and next year nobody came with us sent us to the fifth grade. I'm going to be quiet just a minute, but the Lord will tell this. I didn't know I made history, amen. It might not be in a book, <laughs> but it's in my heart. So I went to the fifth grade. And then I went to the sixth grade. Got to the sixth grade. Was a black teacher finally came to teach. I know her real well. She hymns. She sings a hymn while you're preaching. You know it, Dr. Griffin. Yeah. And she came in and and we had I had a shirt on that my mother made. It says, "Do unto others as do unto you." That's all it said. That's all it said. Do unto others as you had them not, not doing like that. Whatever. But it was was talking about you know do others like you want to be treated. So it was just a, a saying that she had on, on the shirt. So the teacher thought it was, it was, she said it was, it was annoying. She couldn't teach because every time she looked at that, those two people, the black person, the white person on the shirt, that she couldn't stand it. So she called the lady, the other black lady in, the teacher in, and told her, come and talk to me. So she she told me, the black teacher told me to go and turn my shirt on the wrong side. <laughs> on the wrong side, wrong side out, wrong side out, amen. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I sit in the classroom. We had a paper that day, but I didn't have a chance to turn my paper in because I was out there turning my shirt on the wrong side. So my dad came to school the next day. Oh, glory. Because my dad had come. <laughs> it's, it's a mess. My mother, she could always come. So how happened? My dad had worked for the man who was the principal and told him, so I don't know what's going on with you, but that little girl upstairs, she gets up every morning and she cooks dinner. She cooks our breakfast and she get all my people ready for me to go do my little work to haul wood. And I haul wood because of that little girl upstairs. And, I, and I, the next time she come home with her shirt on the wrong, wrong side, I'm going to come in wrong side. So you know what? <laughs> I turned my paper in, but she got me at the end. She, put, she held me back a year. And so I was upset because she held me back because my dad spoke his piece and I spoke my piece, but I spoke to a, a black person. But the black person, I don't know what she told her. She might have had it all mixed up, mingled up. Amen. But she held me back. But you know what? I graduated. Amen. I finally graduated. Hallelujah. But that tells me that we can, uh, social justice, not only the ones who are all in the pages, but we of ourselves have made some, some, some social justice. So now here I am preaching about things. And then I'll leave the, the guy that I told you about, the doctor called me the other day. He, he texted me on Facebook. He said, he said, you still social justice in He had justice in I know that was a word. Amen. I said, hi. He said, you are a lawyer for real. You're speaking the word of God. You tell everybody they need to know about Jesus. And I said, oh, I thank you. He said, if it wasn't for you in the classroom, I wouldn't be a heart surgeon today. If you weren't in the classroom, my wife wouldn't be a nurse for today. If you weren't in the classroom, because they were all our, our classmates, they would have went home and not came back to school. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father. Yes, yes, yes. I thank, hey, you, Father. Amen. thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, my beloved, there is hope that we can truly believe in, and that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Be blessed today. Amen. That's my black, that's my black amen. speech. Amen.